Hello. Welcome back to what's bubbling a zim. I am Dr. Abstract. And in this bubbling, we're going to continue to take a look at what's new in Zim, version Zim 00. zero. Woohoo! Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. We can get to a mini site that we've made under News here, or in Examples under Collections, or we can press on the banner, any of the banners. And that brings up our puzzle. Yay! <laughs> We've already done our puzzle uh, in the last bubbling, but uh, we don't have to wait for it to finish. Um, we could just hit Zim00, and it's always nice to see what the puzzle looks like. Oh, isn't that lovely? By the way, the features of the puzzle can be found in the console. So F12 and view the console. There's an object there that holds all of the features that would be sent to FX hash for uh, the NFT to find out its rarity. So it's fun to see that, for instance, uh, how it's cut up, um, how many brushes, the colors, and see what might be rare or not. All right, well, let's go through to see what the topic of this bubbling is. It is, click, ooh, pick, vid, odd, and SVG. Four new classes that wrap the Zim asset system. We inherited an asset system roughly from CreateJS through PreloadJS and its manifest. We simplified that to pass them into the frame uh, and then use asset to show them. And all of that stuff still works. As a matter of fact, all of that stuff is still in behind each of these. The difference is, is when we have a pick, it's actually a container that holds uh, an asset, uh, the bitmap. And vid, we've shortened the system to, to make a video. So we've added, we in behind the scenes, we do an HTML5 video tag, a source tag, the various um, events to make sure that that's all ready to go. And then um, that's all inside of vid. And we pipe that into the bit, uh, bitmap. So that's in there. Odd, we've got some cool things that we've added to odd. Uh, and the naming of these were fun. Uh, well, let's just finish this SVG. We have two different types of SVGs that can be in there. So that wraps two of them, an SVG to bitmap and an SVG container where the um, objects are blobs and squiggles are converted to blobs and squiggles and, and shapes with transforms to all be editable. All right, the naming of this was, was kind of fun. We put out a poll on Discord and Slack and <laughs> it was sort of weird. All Discord people said almost all one thing and Slack said almost all another thing, all almost the same amount. But in the end, the, uh, this, this tally won and I kind of like it. Uh, we can't use image. Otherwise, we probably would have just used image, video and sound. But we run the risk of video and sound, for instance, being used by JavaScript in the future. Uh, we run the risk of it. SVG being used, but currently isn't. Anyway, uh, image was already used, so we couldn't use image. We thought picture, but picture was a little bit lengthy and stayed. Uh, but so we, we decided pick. Hey, pick sounds fun. And that means why not use vid? Pick and vid. And then what do we do with <laughs> pick, vid, and sound? Uh, so we decided to go pick vid and odd. <laughs> hey, we'll get used to it. <laughs> Three letters. Um, there we go. Yay. So let's have a look at what these are. Here's Hello. a video. I am Dr. Abstract, the founder of the Zim JavaScript Canvas framework. Great, and we'll pause that. And then here and behind are SVGs. Cool, with the sound on it, so that's odd, and a sound when, it, when, it, uh, when it's dropped. And then here's a picture in behind all this. There's the pick. So we've got SVG, pick, odd, and vid. Uh, we also have an interface here that will uh, lead us to more examples. This is Zim version Zim00, but we'll probably also put Zim01 in here. And you're welcome to call it Zim00. You know, hey, this is Zim00. It's fine. We're calling it Zim version Zim00 just because all of our versions had three letters. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm sure that will be dropped eventually. Okay, let's go take a look at some code. F11 out of that, and here we have it in Atom. 
we have a module, and we'll do a bubbling on ES6 modules, but this is a script type module, and we're importing Zim from this location. Unfortunately, Adam has decided to really darken that, darker than even a comment. <laughs> it's like, what are you guys thinking? Uh, anyway, zimjs.org slash cdn and then zero zero and zim. Nice and easy, huh? So we're importing that. We're also importing the make interface that does that little uh, widget up in the right hand corner from this location. And then we're into a zim frame. We're bringing in fonts from an assets folder, which is sort of too bad because one of the new things we want to show you is the new path. So we can specify a path variable, a global path variable like that, of whatever we want and whenever we want. So we could load, this is lazy loaded, that would load from this path. It's just like taking that path and sticking it on the front. However, if we already have a path here, then path is automatically set to whatever the path is here. So just beware that that's the case. You can change it if you want. So this could be sounds and now from now on anything's coming in from sounds but say this is video and you and this was in video you can say path equals video and now the path is video and load a bunch of videos <laughs> that's what you're doing all right so uh we don't want it from sounds though that was assets in other words that's redundant we could take that out and it would work just the same because of that assets right there here it is pick Wow! So a new pick, and we pass in that. So basically, this is pretty well the same as saying asset like that. That's how we used to do it, but a little bit different because if we did it here and we made another asset, let's make another asset. I think you know where I'm, what I'm getting at. And if I dot move this one a little bit like that, what it's going to do is it would make the asset, or it would use this asset. This is a reference to the asset. It would use that. Then when we use it here, it's the same one. It's a reference to the same same one. And it would just move it. Oh, move 20. It would just pick it up from where it was here and move it 20. <laughs> and that, that was confusing for some people. So our solution, as you probably are saying, yeah, we would dot clone it. So this clones that one, and then we've got two things. But that was always tricky. Now it's not like that. So if we have new pick here, let's try it. So there's our new pick. That is an object, and so is this. So this new pick is a different object now. And if I dot move it, dot move, MOV, say 20 or 30, like that. So now this is a second one, and let's see what we get. We open in Browser Plus. There it is. Hello. Do you see it? How we have two, you can see it because the alpha is down on it. We've got two of them shifted over. So no longer do we have to clone. And that's, hey, good. We don't have to worry about that. Remember that that is a container. And so what that is specifically is a bitmap inside of a container. The container has its mouse children turned off, which means if we were to pick it up and dot drag that, dot drag, then it would pick up the whole whole container, which is nice. So, hello, there it is. Just Dr. picked Abstract, up the whole container the over of top of that. JavaScript Canvas framework. Pause you. <laughs> it picked up the whole thing. Uh, if we didn't have the mouse children turned um, to false, it would pick up the bitmap inside the container and move it around. The container itself wouldn't move unless you went drag all. <laughs> Oopsie, drag all colon true, true like that. And then it would, anyway, we, we don't want to make people do that. So we put the mouse children to false. Don't worry too much about that, but it is one of these subtleties of interactive media that's been around before Flash. And even in Director, we had mouse children and these issues. So it's a known issue for 30, 40 years. <laughs> Uh, good. So there's our pick container super. One thing to watch out for, though, we bypass some warnings here, is that, let me just refresh that, um, is that if we go to tile something, if we were to tile this pick, tile needs dimension set. So we would set, we would need to set dimensions here, 100, 100, or whatever it may be. 
Um, that would work, or we could preload it, and then the tile will work fine because it, uh, anything preloaded, if it's uh, on a ready event, it's we know the dimensions, or load assets, we know the dimensions. So that's fine. Or you could even do it right here. You could say uh, const pick is equal to, and then down here you would say pick dot on complete. Oops. Call this arrow function and tile it in there. At this point, the pick knows its dimensions, and so the tile will know its dimensions and be fine. There's also a ready event that you can use. Ready and complete, basically the same thing. It just means that that pick is ready or complete. Video is ready or complete. Sound is ready or complete. Sounds a little bit tricky. We'll come to the sound later, though. Nice, huh? Um, so just watch that. Another thing is this is uh, this is the dimension that you're saying it is, but as soon as it loads some stuff in it, it takes on the dimension that it really is. Okay, so this is you, you probably would be a good idea if you got this to be the actual dimensions. It's sort of important. Okay, and we're deleting that and deleting that, but this is fine for lazy loading because scale two and center, both those need to know the dimensions too. But what we've done is worked out a system that it, it says, oh, scale two says, wait a minute, I'm, I'm an asset container or I'm an asset container with bounds. This is, this is the type of the object as it's loading. It's either one of these. If it has bounds, then it's, it's called that. Once it loads, it becomes a pick. So the type of it is pick. But anyway, while it's loading, and if it tries to call scale two and center while it's loading, scale two and center say, well, no, 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 we, we don't know your dimensions, call us again later. <laughs> and then once it all loads, once it's complete and becomes an, um, a pick, then it recalls scale and center. So it has to call that twice. I don't think you'll notice performance-wise, but if you're loading 100 things, you might consider preloading <laughs> rather than lazy loading. That's all. And anytime you're using tiles, you might want to uh, preload it. Otherwise, you got to specify the dimensions. All right, there you go. Tile and scroller were the two that we could think of. Tile is really complicated, uh, really, really complicated. Plus, you're loading who knows how many things in, and they might come in from from zim v values and be dynamically loaded. And we're, we'd have to look at, okay, well, is everything that you say you're going to be loading, we have to wait for every one of those to be complete, and then we have to recall tile. And tile itself doesn't use center and scale to or anything like that in it. It's all raw create.js, so it works only with create.js if we wanted to. So we don't have any of those conveniences in there. And it's just like, nah, really, really complicated. Because remember, tile's also responsive, and it's just like, ah. So just give it dimensions, please. <laughs> That's the last we'll say on it. There's lots of warnings throughout here. You're probably dying to know what the video is like. So here it is. Wow. New vid. That's it. Cool, huh? And we can do stuff with it. There we are positioning it. We've set its alpha to zero so we don't see it. Um, you can't play it until you interact. So you just have this video sitting there. So we set it to zero and then we animate it in later down here, and that's fine. So to interact, we've set up this pane. Uh, <laughs> there us, there's us calling the Reuben. That's why we had to put the, um, the assets path up there. Uh, but anyway, we're calling a pane. And when the pane, this is the callback for when the pane hides, so, or closes. So show collects in it, uh, this is relatively new. I think it was the last version of Zim that we patched that in. Uh, you can pass in a callback function that when the pane is hidden, like when it closes, it will call this. And that's really handy. If we wanted to, that could be an arrow function, or you could just have the pane with an arrow function be your whole app, basically. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we're calling init. And then here's our video. Let's take that out. There's the play, video.play. So once we interact with something, in this case, a pane or a button or even mouse uh, stage dot on stage mouse down, <laughs> uh, we could then play the video. Oh, uh, we would, if we don't animate it back up, then obviously we'd want to set itself in there. Okay, got it. And we've got a cursor on that to, to later we're going to pause the video right there. So what are we doing to the video? Well, we're doing a key out on it. Isn't that cool? We're going to see a bubbling on key out in the next bubbling. 
Oh, maybe not next one. I think next one we'll do ES6 modules, but one after that, where we look at the, the, the new color picker spectrum and a, a color dropper and keying out a bitmap, col colors and a bitmap. That's chroma keying. And we have indeed chroma keyed the video. Do you want to see what it looks like without? Okay, let's play it. We'll, we'll animate the alpha up. So that's what we're doing there. Probably didn't need this one if we've got that one. Yeah. So we save that, we refresh here, and there it is. Hello. I am Dr. Abs. So you can see that it's got a green background there. I, I filmed that in Zoom, by the way. <laughs> How's that for? Zoom has really good keying out of, of backgrounds. The best I've seen out of anybody. Of course, they're like million dollar company, million, million dollar company, or whatever. Of course, they're going to have really good technology. So I just, um, it's free. I just filmed myself and my webcam and zoom on uh, with a green background there. I think I uploaded a, a, a picture as a background. It's just a green picture, nothing. And that gives me that. And then I found out what color it is. That's the color right there. And here it is what, when we key it out. This is what it looks like. We'll do more on keying in the next one. Hello. There we go. I am Dr. Oh, nice. Abstract, the founder of the Zoom. And then we're fading up the, slowly, dramatically fading up the SVG, which we're about to see. So when we mouse down on the video, we're going to pause the video. So Zim's vid right here, the vid has some things in it, some nice things in it. It's got the play, so video.play. That play is normally on the source of the video, or the video tag dot source. Or, no, I guess it's just the video tag dot play. But in, when we've got vid, the reference to the, the HTML5 video tag is called source. So vid dot source gives us a reference to it. We could have said vid dot source dot play, vid dot source dot pause. But we brought the play method and the pause method right into the video, along with the video paused property and a volume property and maybe a few others. Position, um, something like that. Current time, I think it's called current time and duration. So all those are brought in as properties as well into vid. All right, I think that's pretty straightforward, all that stuff. That's nice. So here's the SVG. Uh, recall, and we put this in notes in a few places, that Zim already has blobs and squiggles, and they work like SVGs, except the user can edit them. They're very powerful. You can animate along them. You can animate them. You can uh, do hit tests on, on paths. You can animate one path to another path. You can drag things along the path. Uh, you can make put beads on the path. You can do... Uh, shape tweens. Did I say that? <laughs> anyway, all sorts of things you can do with blobs and squiggles already. But uh, SVG is handy if you've got an SVG that's already been made. You can bring that in. So this is the SVG right here. And because we're tiling it, we provided dimensions. If we didn't provide dimensions, it gives a warning in the console and just sticks the SVG up in the left-hand corner. So if that happens, uh, read your console, and it basically is saying you've got anything you want to tile that you're lazy loading, give it dimensions, or don't lazy load it. Load it in through, like we've been doing all along, load it in through the frame. And you can load the SVG in that way as well, and still use this exact same code. So if you put forest.svg up in here, it would be an array at that case, that paste, oopsies, whatever forest.svg, I guess I missed my copy. So there we are loading in forest and the font from assets like that, doop, doop. Then it's preloaded and you don't have to add dimensions, wherever that was, video. So lost it. Oh, that was audio, oh, here it is. At that point, it's preloaded. Okay, but if you don't put it up above in the assets, then it's not preloaded. It's lazy loaded and you would want to provide the dimensions there. Okay, and we're tiling two of them, one row. 
and doing the rest of this stuff. So great, we're animating it slightly in and adding some audio to those, which we'll see. So anything about the SVG. So SVG, there's two types we can load in. One is SVG to bitmap. And by the way, this is like great. If we scale it 20, the size here, we still get SVG um, crisp scaling. So check this out. Hello, It'll I am Dr. Abstract, come in. the founder of the Zim JavaScript Canvas framework. Look at that forest. So perfect Hello. quality, even SVG Abstract, video. I don't exactly know how it does that, but it, <laughs> but it does. Isn't that amazing? Uh, so we'll just set that back to two, though. And the other type is called SVG uh, container, SVG container, and that that will look, so the. In SVG here, you've got width, height, and the next thing is the type. So if you say it's bitmap, bitmap, you're asking bitmap, is bitmap true? That's by default, it is true. But if you say false, then it's not bitmap, it's SVG container. And that will then try and turn that into blobs and squiggles. I haven't actually tried it with the forest. <laughs> I don't want to. Um, yeah, the SVG to bitmap is much easier to do. You just load the SVG uh, onto a canvas and turn it into a picture. That's <laughs> no problem. Um, but And that handles things like CSS styles on SVG. But to actually convert the SVG is, oh, like 300 lines of very complicated code. We did our very best KV. and uh, We worked on that. And um, it was very hard to do. But I think we've got it, except we don't have things like um, CSS, uh, SVGs controlled by CSS properties. But we, all the other ones we do, and, and remember that if you, if you just have like a, a shape, like, uh, I don't know, a cloud or something like that in SVG, you're welcome to take the path from that. It's got a path and just pass it right into a blob, and then you've got a Zim blob that can do all those things that we were mentioning. So sometimes you don't even need to load in the SVG in this manner. Just pass the SVG path into a blob or a squiggle, and you got that. Okay, that's probably enough about SVG-ing. And if we come on down here, we're now on sound. Odd. We're nearly there. Look, here's the bottom. Odd. A-U-D. <laughs> Not O-D-D. <laughs> it's funny. We've got a new odds. So we've got odds, but we also have odd now. But audio. Odd. One cool thing about odd is we can style it. Check this out. So here we are saying, well, let's start with an easy one. If we wanted to style all volumes, we could say volume colon point one, and all sounds would be point one volume from that style. Or you can style specifically, well, I think the odds, the only thing that's going to use a volume, so that wouldn't matter. But you could put um, a group in here, a group of sounds, and then specify a group will have this volume. Okay, but that'll over, be overwritten. This one will be overwritten by these two volumes that we've got there, but we could have volumed a series. So a series of 0.4 and 0.2, we'd take that out of there and just volume a series of 0.2. Oh, yeah, I think that would work because when this is made, it'll take the first one in the series. When this is made, take the second. You can also put the volume right in the play. So in this case, we've got our audio and the play is down there on on that Get rid of the volume. I'll come back to these guys in just a second. Let's just look at our audio. If we wanted to, we could take this and stick it right here like that. That's no problem. You can do that. You could put the volume in here, 0.4. Um, much like we used to. Before, we said asset that. And that's basically the same thing. With a sound, it just references one sound object that's made. So odd, I think that's how it works. Uh, if I remember correctly. Who built this thing, anyway? Uh, odd, like that. Um, well, actually, I'm doing all sorts of bad things. I'm going to undo this. Oh, yeah, there we go. It kind of makes sense if we're going to play it multiple times when we mouse down rather than make new odd objects. Like I said, there's hardly anything in there. It's just like a pointer, basically. Um, then uh, it sort of makes sense to make the object once and then play it multiple times here. So it's kind of neat. We've added all these parameters right to the odd object itself, which means we don't have to worry about it later when we play them in various places. 
That's nice, and also nice because we can style those things. We've also brought in the max num. So max num was hidden before. It was sort of magical and hidden. Comes all the way from back from CreateJS. And it's how many times you want a certain sound to be able to play. Uh, those are called instances. How many instances of a sound are you allowing? So if you have a max num, the default is as many as the browsers will let you do, which is about 100, I think. But if you have a max num of one, that means it will only play this press sound one, one at a time. Uh, you can play it again afterwards, but at any one given time, you can, you'll only hear it once. If you set it to two, then it would play it overlapping two times, but no more. And then you can decide how to interrupt. Anyway, this max num was kind of hidden. It, to, get, to get Zim to access it, you would have to pass in a Zim assets uh, object to the frame with the sound in it, as well as the max num for that sound. And that was a little bit awkward because, uh, anyway, it's just another object to pass in rather than the sound directly. So now we can make the sound directly and pass it as a parameter of max num is like, I don't know, the fifth parameter or something. So you've got pan and you've got volume. What else? Uh, interrupt as well. I can't remember if there's anything else in there. But interrupt is how what you do. Okay, if there only one can play at a time, what do you want to do if we try and play another one? Do you interrupt it? So the default is none, which means it, it won't interrupt it. It will just finish the first playing sound. And then after that finishes, I can't remember if it plays the second one or whatever. I'm, I'm not sure what it does. I don't think it does. I think it just, hey, sorry, that one's already playing. I'm just going to play it to completion. So that's the default. And by the way, the default, like I said, is hundreds, hundred, or anyway, whatever the browser can handle. So if you didn't have either of these, thing is, if I didn't have either of them, you know what happens. Let's try it. If we don't have either of them, I go like this. Hello. And I'm Dr. Abstract, wait, there's our SVG ready. Have you heard that before? Hello. I am Dr. Abstract, the founder <laughs> of the Zim. So that's, uh, that's what we mean. If we say max num, here's what, uh, well, uh, it'll be a little bit complicated to see what happens. When I drop this one, that one will start playing. If I then drop the other one, it won't interrupt that if, if there's no interrupt. But if I say interrupt any, what that means is when I drop the first one, the sound will start playing. But when I drop the second one, it will interrupt the first one and play the second one from the beginning and the, the first one will stop playing. I don't know if it's the same as sound instance or, or just that we've restarted it, basically, is what's happening. All right, so that's a little bit um, fun stuff about sound that was a little hard to deal with before, but now it's quite easy, as you can see. And like I said, it's parameter right on the odd. It's also a parameter, I don't think it's, a pr the max num isn't a parameter of this, but the max num, or the interrupt is a parameter of the play as well. So on each individual, you can decide. Hey, look at that. Oh, uh, otherwise sound works the same as before. So you could have something like mm, const mm, sound is equal to that. That is called the abstract sound instance, named after me, Dr. Abstract. <laughs> No, it was named by CreateJS. Yes. We have to tell the kids, hey kids, uh, to change the volume after you play the sound, you have to do it on the abstract sound instance. And they all go, oh, of course, yes. Anyway, that uh, that's an object that allows us to control the sound. So sound.pause would be on that. Um, sound.volume, if we wanted to later on change the volume, obviously, if we wanted to just set it right away, we'd do it here. But if this were in a timeout or in a dial, we would use the sound.volume pan. Also, sound.onComplete is on there. Complete, complete. Like that, call this arrow function. So this is the event that will happen when the sound finishes playing. Note this complete event is on the abstract sound instance. It's on the results of the play. Whereas we could put a complete here. <laughs> I'm sure you don't want to see this. Press dot on complete is the, the event that happens when the sound is completed loading. Or you could put ready. 
<laughs> if you like that better, then you're not using a complete here for a different reason than that complete. And we thought about it. We thought about not giving the complete on this load, but the other three have completes to load. And we went, ah, oh, whatever. Who cares, really? So our odd has a complete. What can you do? That's just the situation. Um, the odd has a complete for when it's loaded, as well as a ready for when it's loaded. Exact same thing. And the sound, the instance, has a complete when it's when it's finished. All right, so all that works like it did before. But the odd is new. And that, my friends, yes indeed, is um, all of these nice uh, assets, huh? Wrapped with pick, vid, odd, and SVG. Hopefully that was a good whirlwind tour of all of those and that you'll be using those a lot in the future. I expect so, don't you? So this has been a What's Bubbling in Zim and I am Dr. Abstract. If you're still here, you should definitely come visit us zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to see you there. Uh, you're probably already there already. <laughs> already, already, already there. I've already, already, already said already. And why don't we leave it at that then? When we come back, we're going to get a bubbling on the new ES6 modules or a refresh on that. We actually introduced them last uh, version of Zim, but they've changed a little bit and they've also become our main way of doing the template. So we'll see you then for that one. And then we've also got other examples to go through in more bubblings. Cheers.